How did you do everyone? And welcome to part 5. You know, it's kind of fitting. Uh, part 5 and Neorg uh, 5.0 also released. On the topic of that, quick disclaimer, this episode requires you to have at least version 5.0 on of Neorg on your system. If you're running the latest branch, then you're fine. That 5.0 update was pretty big. It changed a lot of things. It rewrote the concealer. It improved the summary module. It removed a lot of deprecation warnings that we had, so it cleaned up the code base. And it also made some cool tweaks to the journal. If you couldn't tell, I'm making hints to what we'll be talking about in this video. Also, yes, I did change my color scheme back to Kanagawa. I love Kanagawa. What can I say? So in this episode, we will be discussing generation. Three generations. We'll be talking about metadata generation, about index.norg generation, and about journal generation. I did say three generations. So metadata is going to be important for generating summaries of our whole workspace in the index.norg file. We'll discuss the journal at the very end, uh, talking about how you can keep a diary in Neorg with some very simple commands. So let's get started. The first thing that we will look at is metadata. Metadata is just stuff that you want to put in your document without it actually being text. So stuff like, for example, a general description of the whole file, the authors of the file, when the file was created, uh, when it was last edited, and so on. Now first we'll go through the manual way, just so it gets ingrained into your brain, and then we'll look at the automated way because it's literally a single command. So you deal with metadata inside of what is called a ranged verbatim block. You don't have to call it that really formal name, that's just the stuff we use in the spec. You can call this a verbatim block if you want or a range tag, or, or just at symbol something. You've seen this construct before if you've used code blocks, which you have used code blocks. If you want to put Lua in a code block, for example, you type at code, and then the language name, Lua, and then at end. And everything inside is Lua. Now, ranged verbatim tags uh, start off with an at. They have a name. Then they have some parameters that you pass in, uh, space separated, and then they have some content and they're terminated with at end. To burn metadata, we use a different tag that is called at document.meta. And inside of this meta tag, we put in all sorts of metadata. In theory, this can be anything you want, but there are a few standard things that Neorg looks for and that is going to be important for the summary module. The first one is title. The syntax inside the meta block is basically JSON without the excess symbols. So title, colon, and then anything up until the new line is considered important file. You can also assign a description. And you can also define authors. To define authors, you want to put them inside of square brackets, which is going to signify a list. And every new line is considered a new entry, so you could have Byro and then you could have some other person. Apart from authors, you can also define categories. Like this, for example, uh, if you thought I spelt miscellaneous uh, first try properly, you would be completely wrong. I had to like double check this. And here's a basic example of metadata. And this is not included in your file or anything, it doesn't render as anything. You can just go down here and continue writing a document as you would. So this was the manual way of doing it. We obviously don't care about the manual way. So let's go down and run it in Neorg inject metadata. Boop. There you go. So you can see inject metadata included other stuff for us. Uh, it included a created date, an updated date, and also a version. This version is not the version of Neorg that was used, it's the version of Norg that was used with this file. So it's basically the syntax revision. Uh, in case we were to like create a breaking change in the syntax or something, this lets you know which one this file is using. You'll see that authors is not defined as a list here, because if it's a single author you can just plop it in like this and Neorg is going to understand. As for categories though, this always has to be a list. You can't put in my category here. Uh, it has to be like this. A thing to note, uh, every time you save your file, the updated field will automatically be updated as well. And quite literally for document metadata generation, 
that's it. There's not much more to this, but as you'll see in a minute, this metadata can come in pretty damn handy. After we move on to the summary module. Before we do that, I have to do one obligatory thing. As the developer of the project, I always have to do this. If you are interested about anything, look at the wiki. So let's look at the wiki. The module that is responsible for generating metadata is in core.esupports, stands for editing supports, dot metagen, with some fields in case you want to change them. I always point to these module wiki pages because it's a good habit to have. As you're learning something new, it's nice to know where this stuff is coming from and how to tweak it in case you ever need to in the future. So now that we've generated some metadata, let's generate a summary. So for context, what is a summary and why do you care? So a summary is, well, a summary, the of your entire workspace. So you could have a lot of notes about various different topics put into many different categories and subdirectories and you would like to be able to jump from your index.norg file, which is the root norg file of any workspace, to anywhere else very easily. You could like search by category, search by title. That's the goal of the summary module. So instead of you having to go into your index.norg file and manually type out links to everything, like for example, school, work, chores, and so on, by using the document metadata, the summary module can infer everything for you and just write it out. So let's see that happen. Hey, uh, this is your subconscious speaking. You should definitely take a look at the wiki page for this. So before your eyes, I have set up a playground workspace that we're going to be using uh, as an example. Directory structure looks as follows. You have an index.norg file at the very root, which currently is empty. And then I have a notes directory in which I have my notes. Now, all of these files contain a single thing and that is document metadata. So physics, for example, contains a title called physics and a description of my physics notes. History has a title of history and description of my history notes and also some categories, school notes. All we wanna do is we want to use this information to create a summary. So I'm currently in my index.norg file and let's get cracking. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create the heading that the summary will be generated for. Because you can't just generate a summary in the middle of your document, you actually need somewhere to place it. So let's create a first level heading, it can be any level of heading, but it needs to be a heading. Uh, and let's call this my index. This is the most traditional way of doing things. The title of this file is index, and underneath this heading is going to be our summary. And we generate the summary using a single command, a new generate workspace summary. It's a mouthful, but at least it's verbose. What you hit enter, there you go. Now it seems that Kanagwa has something broken with their link highlights, or maybe it's just me that has something broken with my link highlights, I don't know. But these are links, if you hover over them, they are links that point to the file and they contain everything, right? This stuff is categorized. Uh, if you look in history, we have categories, school notes. If you look inside of school, right, this file is also part of school and notes, so it exists in both. And then all the stuff that's uncategorized exists down here. And you can press enter on any of these things and it just takes you right there to the file. Now in case there is no interesting metadata, the summary module will fall back to the first heading title within the document. So for example, instead of biology here, <clears throat> let's create a first level heading and I'm gonna call this my biology notes. My... And now if I delete all of this and I regenerate the workspace summary, you can see that we now have a link to my biology notes in notes slash biology. This symbol within links, if you were listening in part two, you'll know denotes the roots of the current workspace that we're in, which in this case is the playground workspace that I created, right here. And there you go. Now, as long as you stick to the categories and as long as you stick to the correct syntax in the metadata fields, you no longer have to worry about creating an index file. It's just there, right? It's going to be there forever. And just to illustrate that you can do this for many headings, let's you know, go down here. And you can also generate a summary for this. And there you go. There's not much more to show here. Have fun with your summary. There are efforts and there is work that is going to be done on making the summary module more extensible. Because right now there's this strategy and currently it's just called default, which is it's going to look for metadata or it's going to look for headings. In the future, however, 
uh, you can expect this to get much much more powerful, especially when the rewrite of GTD or the getting things done methodology is re-implemented. Um, for example, you could generate summaries based on GTD contexts and contexts in this case mean categories. Or you could format your summaries based on Zettelkast and backlinks. Uh, in case you've ever used Zettelkast and you'll know immediately what I'm talking about. Lots of potential with this little thing, but for now, all it does just creates an index for you. So with those workflow things out of the way, let's talk about the journal, which I think is the most interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong, this stuff is still very important and you are going to appreciate this as you write bigger and bigger notes that you'll say to yourself, damn, I'm happy I didn't have to write out all this by myself. Because before this was introduced, that was exactly my situation. It always feels satisfying to run that generate workspace summary command and just to see it cook. Anyhow, onto the journal. The journal module, in this case, is basically a synonym for a diary. You write an entry for any given day. So for example, for today, you can take note of what you did today, your plans for tomorrow, and then you can, the next day, rerun the journal, and it's going to open up a new file for that specific day. Um, you know what to do. So all of the journal is managed by the new journal command. If you look at the uh, documentation, there's a journal folder string, the name of the folder in which the journal files are put, because the journal can exist per workspace. So you can have many different journals for many different workspaces, and by default, it's going to store all of your files inside of this current directory that we're in, slash journal, and then slash whatever file. So if I invoke New York Journal today, it's going to create a journal for today's day. And there you go. We are now in a file, 2023.06.12, which is the date this video is being filmed at. And if you go into your beloved directory manager of choice, you'll see this is indeed the case. Journal 2023.06.12.org. And you can do whatever diary things you do. I don't know, I don't keep a diary, so it's a bit weird for me. <laughs> it's it's like self-reflecting on what you did today, but in like a pretty weird way, it's like a monologue. No, it's like a conversation with yourself, a journal. I don't personally use it, but, but I can understand the appeal for it. So uh, what do diary people write? Oh, of course, they always start with Dear Diary, don't they? Dear Diary. Um, today, I had a scrumptious lunch. And then what, do you like write regards in a diary or no? Okay, fine. And then when the next day arrives, when you run New York Journal today, it's going to create another file. It's going to create 2023.06.13.org. There are other commands, as you saw. There's the ability to create an entry for today, for yesterday, and for tomorrow. This is useful in case you need to jump between dates. And for example, you forgot to write down something yesterday, so you're like, oh, quickly, I need to go to yesterday's day, and then um, stuff. You save, you exit, you exit, and there you go. So yet again, super sweet and simple. You can also generate a table of contents, but I'm going to refrain from explaining uh, the table of contents module for the journal specifically, because it's in a bit of an unstable state right now. Like you have to understand New York is still pretty young. Stuff's gonna change. And I know as the developer that I'm going to be changing the New York journal TOC command soonish so while you can absolutely use it i'd rather wait until it's stabilized before you know i teach you it but from just this there's also custom you can specify a custom date and this custom value expects a date in the format of year month day so 2023 06 50. also super simple and the last thing i'd like to talk about which is arguably the coolest is the template so if you run template it's going to open up a file called template.norg and this file is, as it says on the tin, going to be your template file. So anytime you create a new journal entry, it's going to populate that file with this template. So continuing with the joke of everybody writing Dear Diary, I can say that Dear Diary is my template. And now if I go in New York Journal and I create an entry for tomorrow, you can see it created a new entry, but that new entry has the templates here. Today, um, well, it's tomorrow, so tomorrow I did awesome things. If you're thinking to yourself that's not a valid sentence, you are, you are indeed correct. <laughs> so that was the journal for you. 
Also a simple introduction. We need to kind of move into these things. I can't just bombard you with everything here. Uh, because if I did, you'd be left with uh, you'd be left with choice paralysis. So today we covered three things: the three generations, metadata generation. We talked about summary generation, and now we talked about journal generation. That's it for today. In part six, we'll be getting into the juicy territory. If I do say so myself, I feel like I say that every video because every video we get into juicier territory. We'll be talking about the calendar module, which is a recent addition to New York, uh, which is also why I was saying you should be on 5.0. And we'll be talking about dates, date management, and how the journal and other modules play in with the calendar, form a more unified experience. That's it for me. Thank you so much for being patient for the videos as well. I'm super glad I don't have people, you know, really uh, pressuring me to make these videos. It's very nice to just be able to release a video whenever I know I can. As stated in the previous video, there is a GitHub sponsors link down in the description if you really enjoy what I do. Any sort of support is super appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!